Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today I would like to share with you my thoughts on how to play the Ismail, the tier 6 Russian battleship. As usual, let's quickly go through the full Ismail ship build starting with the consumables. Using premium consumables is once again a must here, as the Russian battleships have a limited number of charges unlike all other nations which get unlimited damage control parties. So combined with Superintendent, the max you can have per game is 5. The advantages of the extra heal, of course, are self-explanatory. Moving on to the ship upgrades, main armament mod 1, damage control mod 1, AA mod 1, and damage control mod 2. Next to the captain skills, starting with what I would suggest for a, quite a strong build. First 10 points on Priority Target, Expert Marksman, Superintendent, Concealment Expert, followed by Adrenaline Rush, Basics of Survivability, and Fire Prevention. Once again, in, the, in your own training order of preference. Let's look at the ship's core stats using this complete build. For Survivability, we get 55,900 hit points. Once again, a relatively weak torpedo protection damage reduction of only 16%. Main artillery consists of four triple mounted 356mm turrets with an unusual setup one in front, two centrally mounted, and one at the rear with a relatively slow reload speed of 33 seconds and a max range of 17 kilometers. We get a decent AA defense rating of 54 and the long range has a max range of 6 kilometers. Maneuverability we get a top speed of 28.5 knots, a turning circle of 830 meters, a rudder shift time of 12 seconds. Finally Ismail's concealment rating of 49, meaning you'll be surface detected at 13.3 kilometers and by aircraft at 8.6 kilometers. Just a quick reminder, I'm uploading content regularly to YouTube, so if you want to keep in touch, just follow the on-screen instructions. The replay I'm using is my own on the map Neighbors and its domination mode. There is only one enemy carrier, the USS Ranger, and a couple of tier 7 ships in what is an unusually balanced lineup. I've already lost count of the amount of higher tier double CV games, so when you get an even lineup like this, you have a much better chance to do well. Just looking around here at some of the ships on my team, and it's really quite amazing how many are not using any kind of camouflage. Use camouflage, people. Not only does it decrease your detection range, but it increases the dispersion on incoming shells, making it less likely you get hit. It's win-win, so not using it to save some credits just leaves you at a huge disadvantage. For clarity's sake, I'm using the Victory Camo, one of the many rewards available from the recent Russian battleship event. I managed to get three missions from the Soviet containers. Firstly, the Izmail, followed by the tier 5 Beater Veliki, and lastly the tier 7 Sinop. So I hope that explains why I'm starting the Russian battleship line with the tier 6 and not earlier tiers. So, how to play the Ismail and get consistent good results. The Russian battleship line is unique for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the main guns. The main reason being they benefit from reduced dispersion at medium range. So what does that really mean? Basically speaking, your ideal engagement range will be between 10 and 12 kilometers, where you will have better dispersion, allowing you to land more shells reliably on target. Just a quick side note here for the more eagle-eyed among you. Did you notice my anti-aircraft guns not opening fire until the enemy torpedo planes were at 4.8 kilometers range? Despite having a long range AA defense of 6 kilometers. As recently discovered and made public by a little white mouse, your AA guns are unloaded at the start of a battle and only start reloading once enemy planes actually breach your AA range. Wargaming, come on. 
Please fix this. The first target of opportunity appears. Enemy Budiani. And he's right in that sweet spot range. Although I'm having a little difficulty judging his actual direction due to the island. But I still managed to get a very healthy 17,000 Citadel strike on him. And he's quite low. Just getting our team to focus him down. I neglected to quickly tap the map key to get a better idea of his direction here. Our friendly New Orleans takes him out. The majority of the enemy team's battleships are approaching A and are virtually all out of range. Take note of how I'm remaining angled here and only showing broadside to ships that are currently out of gun range. Even though I'm currently undetected, even while I was shooting that Budiani, maintaining a well-angled ship to even potential threats is a great habit to learn early and practice continuously. Playing battleships well is all about positioning yourself, to take advantage of your big guns to punish the enemy's flanks and broadsides, while attempting to preserve your own health pool, allowing you to remain effective throughout a battle. Getting the best out of Ismail will involve getting into positions to brawl with the enemy up close and personal, allowing you to outgun them. Ultimately, it comes down to decision making. Enemy Veliki is spotted just over 11 kilometers away. Shots away. He's showing full broadside. We get 16,000 volley on him, knock out one of his guns, gets behind the island. Due to the slow nature of battleships, you always have to be thinking a long way ahead. Where is the bulk of the enemy fleet? Where are they going? How best to get to where I can put my guns to best effect? Of course, I recognize it's very easy to get sidetracked and lose sight of the bigger picture. But these are the problems posed that you need to constantly evaluate during a battle. I'm hard detected here and the number that is targeting me and there, sure enough, enemy destroyer. I'm forced to turn away hard here. The Veliki is turning his guns. Hopefully I can finish him off before he gets a salvo off. I do manage to finish him off with a 13,000 salvo. The Helena is spamming me from behind island cover and the destroyer is attempting to rush me from behind. Now the immediate threat here is not the HE spam from these cruisers but this destroyer. The Ismail has a very weak torpedo protection belt so avoiding torpedoes at all costs is vital to your survival. Enduring a bit of high explosive spam is not so much of an issue in Russian battleships due to the decent armor and can be virtually all healed back given the opportunity. By sailing directly away you make it very difficult for a destroyer to land torpedoes effectively. Literally the best he can hope for is to land one on my stern. No sooner had that first fire burned out I instantly get a double fire and I use my first damage control. I must stress the importance of saving your damage control for such situations. Time to quickly turn and finish this destroyer. And it may seem like a little bit of overkill using all my guns here, but I want to make sure he's eliminated. It's a common mistake made by players to instantly extinguish one fire. Had I done so in this case, I would have been forced into letting both fires burn for the full duration of my damage control co cooldown. So I've managed to get undetected here. Time to reassess. New Orleans is spotted, sailing broadside. I do kind of expect him to turn away here, but he keeps... He keeps sailing dead straight, and I get six overbends. That's quite unfortunate. I anticipated there he would turn away from the incoming fire, but he kept sailing dead straight. Enemy destroyer, and three cruisers are currently in my gun range. Enemy for attack I briefly spotted. I'm in a nice position here, I'm undetected. Enemy cruiser there behind the island, just looking for that clean shot. 
Looking for any potential broadsides to be shown here. These cruisers will be aware. Enemy for attacker spotted again. My friendly Colorado opens fire. Let's see if he's going to. He seems to be turning outwards there, and that's unfortunate. He gets undetected. I would have had a perfect shot on his broadside. He gets spotting on him again. He does seem to be. Okay, he's making a turn inwards. Shots away. Not the best dispersion there, but we still get a healthy 13,500 Citadel strike on him. He's quite low. Just wandering a little bit out of position here and instantly gets set on fire by the Fur Attacker. Guns almost reloaded. He is once again making a turn. I can fire my front guns. Much better dispersion here. And the enemy fur attacker goes down to another citadel. Now I am undetected here. We're just under halfway through the battle. So I do use my damage control here. In this case it's okay to use a damage control. I don't want to let the fire burn for the full duration. I'm unspotted, I'm not under any direct fire. I just fired some long range speculative shots at the Helena there, but she was already drifting out of my gun range. Our destroyer is still sitting AFK in the cap, in the spawn I mean, and it's something that really is quite annoying recently. Quite a large number of AFK ships. Always detrimental to your team. It's time to push forward towards the B cap. Enemy destroyer, the mass, is currently spotted by my carrier's attack planes. Let's see if I can get off some shots over this island. Enemy torpedo planes incoming. Enemy mass still is spotted. I'll take quite a bit of lead. Shots away. He kept sailing relatively straight. Got a pretty decent hit. And the, our friendly shores manages to take out the enemy mass. And that's a big bonus. My AA is able to shoot down a couple of planes, but we've removed the threat of torpedoes now from the enemy team, barring the carrier of course. Trying to get my friendly destroyer to push into the cap point, as we're still trailing on points. Not by much, but it's Great to establish gap control whenever possible. Enemy New Orleans is quite low. He's reversing slowly. And he's taken out by our Calisonier. Enemy dive bombers coming in on our, my New Mexico. My AA trying to help him out. Enemy is Ismail in the distance. And a war spite incoming. My AA guns took quite a battering from multiple cruisers earlier. And I'm unable to provide ample support to keep those dive bombers off the New Mexico. Coming in for another strike. And I'm unable to shoot down any planes here. Oh, he comes actually in last strike on me, but he actually misses. The war spite now is a major threat. It's important to keep angle to him. He's focusing on the New Mexico. Lands a big hit, and the New Mexico goes down. I did manage to get 10k on the war spite. Enemy Fiji has been spotted, and now he is a direct threat to my destroyer. Gonna have to focus on 
Fiji, Fiji does appear to be turning full broadside. Looks like pretty good dispersion here. Oh, very nice. And our Leningrad at the same time manages to take out the enemy war spice with torpedoes. I'm gonna take a torpedo here. Luckily, I don't take a flood. Enemy torpedo planes are circling around for another strike. Angling in. And he just dropped them a little bit too soon. And they didn't activate. So with that devastating strike on the VG and our Leningrad taking out the enemy war spite, we've taken a huge step to winning this game. Enemy Ismail is low health and retreating and just outside my gun range. We've taken a healthy points lead now of over 250 points. We have a four ship lead and the enemy Ishmael is in full retreat and under fire from our two cruisers. And the only enemy ship seems to be the Colorado that's making a push towards the B cap some long range shots he's just at the edge of my gun range and you can see here the dispersion at very long range while the enemy carrier comes in for another strike managed to shoot down three of his planes set some fire take out another plane kill Colorado opens fire on me so time to turn in quickly and angle You don't want to be showing broadside in the Ismail at any stage and you always want to be focused on mitigating incoming shells by remaining as angled as possible. Enemy Colorado is more than capable of punishing me at this range but I'm getting into a range now where I will benefit from a better dispersion. even able to bounce my shells there even though he's showing quite a bit broadside he is angled now in enemy Ismail is about to go down let's see if I can secure the kill on this Colorado he is burning and we get the Kraken achievement award and the game ended soon afterwards. So I'd like to just tell you I've added some more highlights before we look at the results screens. You can see very respectable 111,000 damage. Four achievements including the Kraken Unleashed award. Two thousand XP. Very nice for a tier six ship. So a couple of highlights I included without making the video too long. Playing the Ismael, you're going to find a lot of Ismaels in the matchmaking at the moment. So it's very important to realize there are some nice sweet spots you can be shooting at. Here is aiming at that front turret and getting perfect dispersion and a very nice triple citadel devastating strike. Something else I've noticed which is very very handy with the Ismael is the amount of turrets and guns 12 in total allowing for great dispersion in close-up engagements but also the functionality of when you are faced with angle targets like this Fur Furutaka here just waiting for my guns to reload. The option to fire single turrets, hopefully gauging 
and hopefully forcing the enemy into making a turn thinking you fired you can see the dispersion can be quite odd at times despite the close range but even though he was maneuvering still managed to take him out overmatching his nose and here's another highlight enemy shores attempting to run away in the distance can be quite a threat enemy cruiser especially tier higher like this very accurate long range HE he managed to get undetected but not before easing a double citadel and just barely surviving would you like to see more of these ship highlights at the end of videos just let me know in the comments and thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i've linked some more of my recent videos at the end feel free to check them out let me know in the comments what you think or if there is anything in particular you'd like to see and until the next time keep sailing it like you stole it